I hate the cross. I hate the cross. Crucifixion is a gruesome exhibition of wicked man's twisted disposition to inflict painful punishment and derision on other wicked men. Death is a wage that is paid to the guilty, and no matter how visibly clean or how filthy we may seem to be, we deserve to be put to death on a cross and worse. The truth hurts, and that's the truth. You are guilty. I am guilty. And really, I hate the cross because it's the horrific fate of my own creation, and it has to be taken. But your and my demise, no matter how we may die, is insufficient. Why? The nature of our offenses is infinitely offensive because of the infinitely holy nature of the one we've offended. And this is why hell is an infinite duration. The bottomless cup of wrath that God is impelled by his nature to pour out upon imperfection cannot be fully spent on his finite creation unless it be poured out forever. But rather than severing mankind from his graces, the infinitely gracious aspect of his nature ordained to give mankind a savior before the foundation of creation was laid. Jesus the Son is his name. It's amazing, see, he left the glory and fame. The tireless multitudes of angels exclaiming, great is your name. And he came to the earth that he spoke into being. Philippians 2.8 says that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death on a cross, divine propitiation. You see, God wasn't lenient. Wrath was poured on the Savior in the place of the crooked, perverse generations who despised and forsaken Christ Jesus. We've hated him. So we see justice and grace on display in the God-man who knew no sin but became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That was God's plan. Jesus said, it is finished. Breathed his last and he died. Not asleep or unconscious, no chance of being revived. Taken down off the cross, his corpse laid in a tomb. There the true life lay lifeless, his disciples' hopes doomed. Before dawn on the third day, the Christ sisters came over with spices to mass decomposing flesh ripeness. When to their great amazement, the great stone that had covered the mouth of the grave had been rolled away and the place where his body had been laid was now vacant. Then a dazzling angel appeared and he said, why do you look for the living in tombs for the dead? This Jesus you now mourn is risen today. Only grave clothes remain in the cave you was placed in. It's true. God was proved greater than sin, death, and Satan. His great resurrection was great vindication of his righteous perfection. He got paid sin's death sentence, and it took less than three days to be fully spent on his excellence. So I love the cross. So I love the cross. It is not the end of our story. Jesus rose from the dead, ascended, and by his spirit lives in us, our hope of glory. What should we say to these things? If God is for us, who can oppose? I am convinced that no height and no depth and no foe, and no power of hell, and no scheme of man, and no thing that is present, and no thing that is past, and no thing that is coming upon us that's troubling, can succeed in plucking us out of his hand. We overwhelmingly conquer through him who has loved us. Death has lost its cruel sting. And now, hallelujah, 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 victorious is the chorus we sing.